Today we're talking about how you can get the best quality out of this right here, a gimbal in general. Real estate shoots always call for gimbal. When you're shooting B-roll, that's gonna be slow-mo of a space. That's gonna be great with a gimbal. My favorite recent time to use this has been running routes with players at these Under Armour football camps. I actually got a pair of cleats from Under Armour so I could run routes with them. And I'm, I'm on turf fields, I'm running routes with these five-star athletes. Am I as fast as them? Not even one bit close, but one trick I found is that if I ask them what route they're running and they tell me, I can keep up a little bit better and they have a defender on them. I don't have anybody defending me, so I can try my best to keep up. But you throw a wide lens on, you're on the gimbal. Makes filming them fun, makes it a little more dynamic. This is standard for all Ronin gimbals, which in my opinion are the standard, especially for you DSLR shooters out there. We're gonna balance it first. It's not the most exciting part, but it's probably the most crucial part of the whole process. We're balancing the GH5 just because I'm using my Canon R5. It's no different. There's a little bit of different adjustments that you have to make, but the whole strategy on how to actually balance it is going to maintain the same. First thing, throw the plate on the bottom. This is the quick release one. We keep the plate on the Ronin on there slide it on in and then right on the back here you want to make sure that that is locked that is locking the camera to the gimbal so that it won't move around at all you can do this a couple different ways i like to do it with one motor locked at a time but i am just coming from the ronin s i was using that for a while still actually have it as a backup and that could hold my r5 everything totally fine but it didn't have locks on the motor, so I had to balance it as everything was unlocked. So I would be sitting here like this, like this, and like this. So it would just be throwing around by itself, but having the locks on the motors makes life a whole lot easier. First thing we're gonna wanna do is we are going to want to lock them in place right there, but keep this top one open. And this is where we'll adjust the top one here. The goal of this is to get it to stay up by itself in this fashion. So something like this. Now, you gotta adjust it one at a time. This and the level are gonna kinda work together to start. So you're gonna wanna loosen it on the left side and mess with this little knob to move it forward and backwards. Now it's about centered. We know that we have to adjust this more to get it to sit at a 45 degree angle. Move it up, move it down, back up. And right there, it's pretty good. Pretty good. I don't like to lock what I already have balanced in place because we're starting to simulate the actual process of how things are gonna go. We're gonna unlock this back motor and now clearly this one is off balance. We want it to sit perfect. Balancing it out. So go like that. It sits perfect just in that way. That's how you know it's balanced there. And then this bottom one, we are going to adjust a little bit. And if I'm gonna be honest, I use the app to balance this bottom one. Once you turn it on, you'll be able to open up your app and that's where we'll dial in the actual settings and the best practices. But I think I'm gonna to have to go inside for that. Yeah, it's kind of cold out here. Let's, uh, let's go into my office. We escaped the windy conditions and we're back in the apartment. Hair's a little messy, you know, it is what it is. Whenever you turn it off, it locks in place like this. I'll show you how. So you turn it on, you hear the little ding, there you go. Motors unlock, opens up, balanced just like you had it. Whenever you turn it off, it locks back in place. The locks will automatically lock and then you can manually unlock them. Now every single time I turn it on, I'm going to calibrate it. You can go into the settings, use the touch screen on the back, but I don't like to do that all the time. There's a lot easier way and it feels more manual. It feels just better. You hold this back trigger here and the M button on the front, hold that down until you see it say calibrating. Now you see it wiggling back and forth. That is how you know it's calibrating. The biggest thing is you're gonna want it sitting on a table, the ground, something whenever you're calibrating it. 
or else things will get all out of whack. I find that this bottom motor is the one that starts to fade if you calibrate it incorrectly. So just set it down and you will not have a problem. I do this every single time I turn this thing on. If you don't have the app already, you're just gonna look up Ronin in the app store. This is Apple specific. And then you'll connect it to the gimbal. This is what it looks like once you're all connected and you will have a bunch of different settings that you can adjust. The biggest thing that you're gonna to wanna to adjust is go into user profile. Once you go into user profile, you'll have pan, tilt, follow, and then the switch on the side is what we're adjusting here. So then you go to the middle one and you'll see on your app it'll change to pan, follow. You'll go down to FPV and you'll see it change once again. We're gonna start up top and I'll let you know my exact motor specifications that I use. Typically, they are much, much higher than I like them. I like a low sensitivity on my gimbal. This is coming from somebody who is using a gimbal every single day for the past four years filming real estate. This is what I found I get the smoothest shots with and give me the most freedom to not look like I'm using a gimbal, but get the smoothest shots possible and be the most versatile. Hope that makes sense. The settings for the pan, tilt, follow are gonna be 10 pan, 10 tilt, 10 roll. Very low, you can go all the way up to 100, but I like to go 10. So that's one tenth of what they can possibly be at the max. If you crank it all the way up, the thing is gonna be flying around. So if you go into medium, you go into slow, those will have the preset ones that DJI already created. I don't think the slow is slow enough for what I want. Like, it's still a little bit herky-jerky in my opinion. You go to fast, I mean, just that. There's no case where I would want my gimbal to be moving this fast. So I go to custom, I go 10, 10, 10. You're gonna put the dead band on low. And then for push mode, it'll be push, pan, and tilt. Look at this wind. This is showing that if you have your gimbal balanced correctly, the wind won't even affect it and you'll be able to get steady shots immediately. So first things first, you'll be able to go forward, you'll be able to tilt up, you'll be able to tilt down, and yeah, I know, I'm getting that gimbal walk going here. But that's a good sign. We already set up our custom mode. So that one I'm on is PTF. Go to that middle setting. This is the real estate king right here. On the side of your gimbal, it's gonna be PF. This is pan follow. Once again, 10, 10, 10, that doesn't change. Dead band, low. Then the push mode is off. You see in a shot like this, a speed ramp for a real estate video, the camera doesn't tilt up or down. It stays level the entire time. When you're using these ultra wide lenses, that is going to be massive. Because if you have an eight millimeter lens, 12, 16, whatever you're thinking, and you tilt up or down a little bit, the walls start to warp. And instead of it being straight up and down, it'll like pin in or pin out. And it is not at all what you want. If you don't know what I'm talking about, get out your 0.5 on your camera and just point it straight whenever it's level, go down and then up to the room and you'll see it start to warp. That exactly is what you're avoiding by not having it be able to go up and down on this middle mode. Now down to the FPV mode. This, you see my gimbal shoot straight up, not the typical mode that it will be in. Click the drop down and you can go FPV. If it's an FPV, you go back and forth, same kind of thing, but it'll tilt whenever you go 45 degrees. If you know what an FPV drone is, that is what this is simulating. Some people love this, I don't that's just the straight up truth and so I go to the 3d roll for one specific reason the poor man's vertical rig see we've all seen a music video that's used this right here change it up like that we've all seen it before I never really used this setting I couldn't figure out what to use the third one for so I use that because maybe there's a time where I would want to vertically mount like the poor man's vertical mount yes you can vertically mount your camera on here as long as you have a cage and some kind of mount but if you want a poor man's vertical mount you can go to this mode right here go straight turn it and you can at least get one vertical shot you're very limited to what you can do 
but it'll give you that steady shot and make it vertical without having to re-rig your entire camera if you just need that one specific shot. I like to describe using a gimbal in a way like I like to describe flying a drone. Anybody can go to the store and buy one of these. If money doesn't matter or whatever, you can, you can go buy one. It's accessible. Same with a drone. But the difference between you taking it out of a box and somebody that has been flying for 10 years is that they can use the little ins and outs of it and actually the technology doesn't hold them back. I've been using Ronin-S for the past four years and I just recently upgraded to this RS3 Pro. But the Ronin-S was still a great gimbal and I got used to it so I didn't upgrade over time. I didn't need the newest gear all the time. Same thing goes for a drone. You can sit there and you can have a herky-jerky drone path, but I might be sitting here after flying drones for multiple years and I'm gonna be able to control the tilt of the camera, the side-to-side -side movement of the drone, and the elevation all at the same time to get a smooth drone shot that feels a lot more dynamic. It really comes down to the user. And whenever it comes down to the user for a gimbal, the heel-toe walk is going to be your best friend. This is a bit of a secret. I've shot real estate for the past four years, and this is the number one tip that I've gotten. Number one tip I'll give, it's the gimbal walk. We all laugh at each other about it, we all joke about it, but it's a real thing and you gotta do it. You're gonna walk with your gimbal, and instead of walking like you normally would, you're gonna have some micro bumps if you do that. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go with the heel to toe. Now I'm doing the fancy one here. This is toe to heel. Toe to heel is going to help you out, but the better one is going to be heel to toe. Coming in, filming the camera, heel to toe the whole time. It's the ninja walk. It's the thing we laugh at each other about, but it's there for a reason. We, we use it for a reason. As you get more tired, the heel to toe is going to help you. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're not already. We just hit a huge milestone on this channel where whether it happened by the time this video comes out or it happens in a few days, I'm gonna monetize my channel and make my first dollar. Hit that 4,000 watch hour mark. It's a big, big step. If you've been following, my goal for the past few years has been to make one penny. I think that's gonna happen over the next month. Make that one penny from making 200 plus videos. Thank God I have a freelance career <laughs> so I can get paid to make videos elsewhere, but. It's been a grind. I appreciate your support. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.